She cast a spell so powerful. If you could take me back then and you were able to tell me exactly what has happened, I wouldn't believe you at all. So bewitching. The idea came out of nowhere. It was the most physical rush of excitement. It enchanted the whole world. I would plead for her to write another book. They're just so good. Now in her first ever in-depth interview, she reveals how. Maybe the moment has come just to say how it happened. J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter and me, Friday at 7 on BBC One. News now on BBC One Wales with Hugh Edwards. New details about the Briton who's accused of trying to blow up a plane. Richard Reed drifted to extremism, that's according to fellow Muslims in South London. Nigel Hawthorne, one of our best loved actors, has died suddenly. And a lively comeback at Highbury as Arsenal go on to beat Chelsea. Hello, good afternoon. More details are coming in about the British man who is accused of trying to blow up a transatlantic flight. It's emerged that Richard Reed was a regular worshipper at a mosque in Brixton in South London. The chairman of the mosque told us that he fears many other British Muslims have also been recruited for a holy war. More from our Home Affairs correspondent, Margaret Gilmore. He's just the type of person security services here and in America are worried about. When he was arrested in the US just before Christmas, he had no previous terrorist record. Those who knew Richard Reed, alias Abdul Rahim, say he was a petty criminal who became a Muslim while in jail in the UK. Once released, he attended Brixton Mosque. Its chairman says Richard Reed began mixing with extremists elsewhere in South London who advocated jihad or holy war against the West. Though at the mosque, they advised against this and taught mainstream Islam. He was getting that from us, going elsewhere, coming back and countering what we were saying, wanting an explanation. He wasn't countering it in an arrogant way initially. Later on, he got into some heated discussions with some of the laymen uh, congregation with regard to his beliefs, showing that he clearly believed in the more extreme approach to jihad. In Paris, they're still trying to establish how Richard Reed came to board the flight to America with explosives in his trainers. He's not the only suspect to emerge from South London. Anti-terrorist officers say a man held in the US over the September the 11th hijackings was based in Brixton for years, and there could be others. Just before Christmas, eight terrorist suspects were rounded up and jailed under emergency anti-terrorism laws. The security services believe up to a hundred extremists could be using the UK as a base from which to plan further attacks elsewhere. Margaret Gilmore, BBC News, Scotland Yard. One of Britain's most popular actors, Sir Nigel Hawthorne, has died. He was 72. He'll be best remembered, of course, for his performance as Sir Humphrey in the BBC television series Yes, Minister. He'd been fighting cancer, but he died of a heart attack this morning. Nick Heim looks back now. Nigel Hawthorne had to wait till he was past 50 to taste success in a part that fitted him like a glove. The top civil servant Sir Humphrey in Yes, Minister. I believe you know each other. Uh, yes, we did cross swords when the minister gave me a grilling over the estimates in the Public Accounts Committee. I wouldn't year. say that. Well, you came up with all the questions I hoped nobody would ask. Well, opposition's about asking awkward questions. And government is about not answering them. <laughs> well, you answer all mine anyway. I'm glad you thought so, minister. <laughs> they loved his portrayal in Margaret Thatcher's Downing Street. Sir Humphrey embodies um, the sophistication, the uh, polish, the... Uh, a superb intellect, the smoothness, not to say sleekness, of the men who run these impeccable machines, as they see it. After 30 years of bit parts, he was able to pick and choose his roles, as the writer C.S. Lewis on stage in Shadowlands, for instance, or as Alan Bennett's Mad King George, for which on screen he won an Oscar nomination. When felons were induced to talk, they were shown first the instruments of their torture. The king has shown the instrument of his to induce him not to talk. All I want, I want, I want. 
career was at a pinnacle. He and his partner, Trevor Bentham, enjoyed the fruits of success. Then the newspapers outed him as gay in a way that ridiculed and humiliated him. He found it shaming. He felt very, very hurt for, and he could never just understand why. He said, what are they outing? I've been out forever. And he remained one of our best loved, most versatile and most polished actors. It's up to you, Bernard. What do you want? I want to have a clear conscience. A clear conscience? Yes. <laughs> when did you acquire this taste for luxuries? The actor Sir Nigel Hawthorne, who died this morning. Eurotunnel has again demanded the closure of a Red Cross centre near Calais after hundreds of asylum seekers forced their way into the Channel Tunnel. The tunnel was closed for more than 10 hours as French police used tear gas to round up the refugees. Police in Kent said no one reached the English side. The tunnel has now reopened. The bushfires in Australia are getting worse and a quarter of a million acres are now affected. Officials have declared a natural disaster area across large parts of New South Wales right up to the suburbs of Sydney itself. Forests and houses in the Blue Mountains have been destroyed and entire villages such as Helensburg have been evacuated. The front line in the battle to stop the relentless advance of the fires stretches for more than 450 miles, creating an arc of devastation around Sydney. There's a general feeling here that the New South Wales bushfire crisis is getting worse. There are now more than a hundred blazes raging near Australia's biggest city. Emergency chiefs admit many are out of control and have warned they could burn for another 10 days. To the south, the town of Helensburg, in the middle of Australia's oldest national park, has been evacuated. A thousand residents have been forced out by the flames. The Australian Prime Minister John Howard has toured the Warragamba area on the outskirts of Sydney to see the damage for himself. Roadblocks and diversions are causing major traffic delays as Sydney lies shrouded in smoke and haze for a second successive day. Phil Mercer, BBC News, Sydney. Sir Paul McCartney has written to the Prime Minister calling for an end to hunting with hounds. He made his appeal as traditional Boxing Day hunts, those who opposed their activities, took to the countryside. North of the border in Ayrshire, enthusiasts enjoyed what will probably be Scotland's last ever Boxing Day meet, as the Scottish Parliament is expected to outlaw hunting later next year. In Afghanistan, the new government is close to reaching a deal on how many peacekeepers will be deployed in the country and for how long. The new Afghan leader, Hamid Karzai, met his ministers today to continue work on trying to rebuild their country. The most visible sign of the international community's support, ensuring peace so that the new government can get on with its work. Britain's Royal Marines are spearheading a much larger force. Afghanistan's new leader says his people are firmly in favour of seeing more foreign troops on their streets. They want guarantees from the international community for peace in Afghanistan. They think that the international community has not been fair to Afghanistan in the past, that, that this nation deserves more. Today he also asked for more aid from abroad to help with the return of refugees. Farmer Rasil Mohammed has come home after two years away. Yes, it is. His house is devastated. He has nothing to repair it with. And yet he hopes soon that he can bring his wife and eight children back to rebuild their lives. My house and my property were all burned down, but I'm still happy to see everything again. My vineyard, my garden and my trees. For now, this slum in Kabul will remain their home, along with thousands of other families. Outside the country, there are millions more waiting impatiently to come back and start afresh. As the situation here stabilizes, more and more refugees will try to return home, putting further pressure on already scant resources. As a new government says, now is the time for the international community to deliver on its promises and help put this country back on its feet. Caroline Wyatt, BBC News, Kabul. Here there's some rather disappointing news for young music fans. The pop sensation Steps have announced this afternoon that they're to split up. five-member group who've sold more than 12 million records said that after five years together they've decided it's time to go their separate ways. 
Football now, and the Leeds United defender Jonathan Woodgate has played his first game for the club since his conviction for a fray. His side beat Bolton 3-0. And in another of today's FA Barclay card premiership matches, Arsenal beat Chelsea in a very lively London derby. Kick-off at Highbury was at noon, but this was a local derby which initially had a morning after feel. Carnu among those lacking the coordination to tear the wrapping off a belated Christmas present. It continued in fuzzy-headed vein until the half hour, when Lampard finally coordinated instinct with deed. 1-0 Chelsea. Struck the half-time half tee, though, must have helped clear Arsenal heads, particularly that of Sol Campbell. His first goal for the Gunners since defecting from Tottenham was simply unstoppable. Predictably, ensuing events were hardly endowed with seasonal goodwill. Vieira's exchange with Hasselbank went unnoticed by the referee, but not by Graham Lasso, whose retaliation moments later might easily have earned him more than a yellow card. More suitable punishment was meted out later when indecisive Chelsea defending left Sylvain Wiltord free to drive home the winner. Whether thanks to the failings of others or not, Arsenal's championship challenge is acquiring increasing authority. Kevin Geary, BBC News. That's it. Don't forget, a full roundup of the football results, of course, coming up on BBC One and Final Score. We'll be back with more news at 11 o'clock tonight. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye for now. Good evening to you. Let me start with a word of warning. Don't go to the hills of Scotland on Friday because the weather looks like being pretty horrendous with some blizzard conditions. Not that it's been all that good there today. Loads of snow showers coming down on those northerly winds and we've seen some in other parts of the country as well, more particularly in the west. But I have a word of warning for you even for tonight for central and northern Scotland in that there will be a fair amount of snow firstly through this evening about 10 centimetres or so in places some extremely hazardous driving conditions. Now with those clearing skies that we have at the moment temperatures are going to take a real tumble falling below freezing in many places but during the course of the night not only will that snow move across central and northern Scotland but we'll have a band of rain working its way across the rest of the country. For a short time I think that rain may well be preceded by some sleet and snow but more importantly as the rain and cloud comes along so those temperatures will rise and by the end of the night they'll be above freezing just about everywhere except in that northeastern corner of Scotland. Now tomorrow for much of the country except that is I think the northeastern half of Scotland it is going to be a fairly cloudy day little bits of rain and drizzle here and there maybe some sleep to begin with in the southeastern part of England. Just a little hint of brightness perhaps along the south coast or in parts of the western Midlands. Also we're going to find the cloud thickening again across Scotland. Rain and again that rain turning to sleet and snow as it heads across into central and northeastern areas of Scotland. In that northeastern part quite a cold day but a bit milder over the rest. Good evening. Kids tell it like it is. So, it just doesn't have sex with them, but you don't love it. And grown-ups act like kids. What if I'd no polyester nicker to wear your heart and got your lorry line? So what do you do when you fall for your best friend? You sure you're going to be all right tonight? You can check on me if you want. And at midnight, wear something silky. Michelle Collins and Paul Kay. Will they be best friends or lovers under 2,000 acres of sky? A new series starts Friday the 4th of January on BBC One. This is BBC One Wales now with the stories making the headlines this Boxing Day, Jane Case and BBC Wales Today. Good evening. Traditional Boxing Day hunts got underway today, ten months after the government imposed a ban to halt the spread of foot and mouth. As the Pembrokeshire and Tredegar hunts gathered in South and West Wales, anti-hunt supporters protested at what they believe is a cruel pastime. But those involved maintain it's the best way of controlling pests. <laughs> Pro and anti-hunt protesters clashed as members of the Trediga Farmers Hunt gathered at Baysleg in Newport this morning. Anti-hunt protesters are angry because what they believe is a cruel and barbaric sport still hasn't been outlawed. We're talking about wild animals being pursued for sport, ripped apart uh, and generally suffering in the process. Ministers suspended hunting in February after the start of the foot and mouth epidemic. Now the Department for Environment has issued licences in certain cases, like here with the Pembrokeshire hunt, who gathered today in Halford West. 
Hunt supporters maintain hunting is the best method of pest control. Foxes haven't been disturbed for nine months. And they're everywhere. They dig in holes. They're after cows and calves. They're after the sheep and the lambs are coming shortly. We've got an essential duty to do for the countryside. For members of the Trediga, today's meeting was a purely social event with no hunting taking place. But with MPs already approving a ban on hunting with hounds, this traditional country pursuit could be outlawed if, as the pro-hunting lobby fear, the government used a procedural tool to steamroll the bill through the Lords next year. The David Powys police helicopter has been seriously damaged during a forced landing. It had been taking a patient to Morriston Hospital on Christmas Eve and was going back to Carmarthen when it had to land near a scrapyard in Goslas. The pilot and an observer had minor injuries. The third passenger was unhurt. Police have discovered the bodies of a man and a woman at an isolated house near the village of Dinas in Pembrokeshire today. Detectives believe the couple did live at the house but won't release any further information until relatives have been informed. Sport now and in football, all three Welsh nationwide league teams have been playing this afternoon. Swansea City beat Exeter 3-0, while Cardiff City drew 2-all with Reading at Ninian Park. And the latest score at the race course is Wrexham 1, Notts County 1. Let's take a look at the weather forecast now and tonight any snow showers should ease with a chance of some rain later on and tomorrow's outlook for us is windy. And that's the news in Wales this Boxing Day. Our next bulletin is just before 6.30 tomorrow morning but from me and everyone here on the programme, have a good evening, goodbye. Boxing Day highlights on BBC One. At 5.15, creepy crawly antics in Ants. Have you ever seen anything more beautiful in your life? At 6.35, the dino drama continues in the Lost World. At 10 to 8, it's the National Lottery and Lottery Extra Draws Live. At 5 past 8, it's a busman's holiday for the staff of Casualty. Is everyone, yeah? And at 5 past 9, as if by magic, Jonathan Creek. I can see how it's a knack you'd have, making women disappear. That's tonight's highlights on BBC One. He was a terrific, terrific footballer. The, you know, the best footballer I would say that Wales have ever produced. He was, he was half a team, really. He was a superstar in a, in a time when they weren't invented. Celebrate a special birthday, John Charles at 70, Thursday night at 10.35 on BBC One Wales. With the voices of Sylvester Stallone and Sharon Stone, the big Boxing Day movie premiere ants on BBC One Wales in half an hour after a roundup of the day's sporting action. Final score with Ray Stubbs.